this opportunity to come and worship you and praise you. And Holy Spirit, as you, you're here among us, as you're walking among us, Father, we thank you for your word that as it's preached, that we just give ourselves over to you and, and you make any changes you want to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Have any of you ever just, you know, we're singing, you know, you're to be overcome with your presence. How many have ever actually been overcome with the presence of God? Come on. I just, you just think about that. You know, Jesus said, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living waters and of that, he was speaking about the Holy Spirit yes. in us. Just rivers of living water flowing out of us. Yeah. Wow. You know, I've, I've had moments in my life with the Holy Spirit where I just, in my own home, in my own room, I couldn't stand because His presence was so great there. You know, we... Early on, and this is this is just freebie stuff for you. Early, early on, um, there was uh, back in the the 90s there was this big prophetic push, and you know everybody was learning how to be a prophet. Do you remember that? And they, some of you might remember that. Some of you are you wouldn't remember this, but they people would walk around with 15 minute tape cassettes and battery operated tape tape recorders, yeah. and they would prophesy into the tape and give it to you. Yeah. Well, you know, I, that's when I came back to the Lord was, was during that movement. And, and uh, uh, <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> anyway. I, I had hands laid on me, and, and this person just absolutely refused to stop praying for me until I fell under the power. You know what it is to fall under the power, right? Yes. power of God comes on you, you just, you lose all your strength, and you're just out for the count, right? right. And I, I, I fell backwards and just, just, just to get the person to stop. See, there's, there's a real presence of God, and then there's a counterfeit presence. You know, I, 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 won't, I won't try to drum up the presence of God just to make somebody feel something. You, you, you really can't. And uh, during this big prophetic time, time frame area, and, you know, uh, there was this prophetic person. She was, she was coming to this, this large church on the central coast, and... Um, I went to it because I was always, I mean, when I first got saved, and I still do now, you know, I mean, we're constantly listening. I'm constantly listening to teaching and preaching, and I just want to be constantly filled. And Amen. so back then, though, we, 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 it's on the Central Coast, and we went to this church, and this prophetic lady was going to be there. And I'm like, I'm watching everything that's going on, and I mean, the, the, the worship team has pom-poms. And they're wearing sequin tops, like they're cheerleaders. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm feeling no presence of God at all. None at all. And I went to the bathroom. I'm like, Lord, what's going on here? He said, he, he said, he said if you want a word from me, you come talk to me. You don't need to go to some prophet. He said, I've put my spirit in you. You stop seeking after the supernatural. And start seeking after the spiritual. Amen? Amen? I love the spiritual. I love the spiritual stuff of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it's tithes and offerings. We've got the basket up there. We've got the, the kiosk in back. You can give online. Go to myridgechurch.org. Listen, you know, um, a famous minister made a statement about uh, recanting on tithes. And, and I saw one, one, one minister say, listen, with everything that's going on in the world, we want to talk about the, the semantics between tithes and offerings. You know, with all the things that the church should be doing. And here's my thing. Abraham gave a tithe of all he had to Melchizedek, the king of Salem. Jesus is a type of Melchizedek. Right? He's the priest after the order of Melchizedek. Abraham gave tithe before the law was given. 
So tithe is something that stands separate and alone from the law. It is just a, a fact with God. God had a tree in the garden. He said, that's mine. Don't eat from it. That's right. Come on. That's the, that's the same thing as tithe. The tithe is his. Don't eat from it. Come on. So we, we give our tithes. We love to give tithes and offerings. We just, I mean, we're joyful about it. We're joyful about it because, you know, God said if you bring all the tithe into the storehouse, I'll store it for you and the windows of heaven will pour out for you such blessing you won't be able to contain it all. Amen. I like such blessing that I can't contain it all. Amen. 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 And I'll remind you, you know, you can grab onto this word that the Lord gave us too. I'll secure your finances. That's right. Come on, I'm, I, we're holding on to that. My, my finances are secure. Amen. Amen. Are your time? Come on. Heavenly Father, we thank you that yes. here we give unto men, but there you receive the tithe. Yes. And you, you, you hold on to it, and you care for it, and we mm -hmm. give it to you, and then you pour out blessings on our lives so great that we can't even receive everything that you have for us. And so we thank you, Father. I thank you for every person sowing and giving and tithes and offerings, whether in person or online present or not present, we thank you for them, Father. We speak the blessing of God on them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, prayer tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, and then um, we're going to start, um, did we set a time for Wednesday? 7, 7 p.m. I'll be here. We're going to start going over um, uh, Joyce Meyer's book, Change Your Words, Change Your Life. Come on, that's so good. The ladies just finished it. But I think you can go through it again one more time. You can come yes. in person. We'll be doing it online. We'll probably just be sitting at the table having Bible study time. Amen? And you can get the book on eBay for about $3. And you can get the book on eBay for about $3, Kathy says. Yeah. Or you could, you could just follow along with us as, as, we, as we highlight different things from it. It's going to be really good. Looking forward to that. Amen? Amen. And you said 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock. Here and live on Facebook. Praise the Lord. Okay. Father, I just come right now in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for your word. Yes. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're living in us. The author of the book yes. lives in us. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. Father, we're so grateful for that. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would, you would give us spiritual insight and wisdom and understanding into your word and to the things that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, I wasn't going to do this, but even as I'm praying, I heard... I heard the Lord say, my heart, go to Proverbs chapter 4. We've had, we haven't been to Proverbs chapter 4 in a while, have we? <laughs> Not since last week. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, give attention to my words and incline your ear to my sayings. Well, I, when I see that, I think about, I think about you know, Jesus and the disciples, and they're in the upper room, and John is reclining. On Jesus do you know it is to recline on somebody you know some people some people like to just be on top of each other you know and other people like I need my space but God wants us to just recline into him and incline our here our, our hearts and our ears to his saints so that's to incline um, like you know incline village you know you know what that is it's skiing and you're going up the incline right you're coming down the incline right Okay, it's, it's an inclining, it's leaning into. We're leaning into. Uh, what is it? What, uh, oh, E.F. Hutton. When E.F. Hutton speaks, people listen. Right. right? Well, when God speaks, people need to listen. listen. Do not let them depart from before your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all your flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. For out of your heart spring all the issues of life. So if what we're putting in our heart is worldliness, when the world comes at us with worldly issues, what's going to come out? Worldly, worldly stuff. Right. Well, you know, that, that monkey pox, the new COVID strain. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a monkey. I'm not getting pox. <laughs> Why? Because I incline my ear to his word. Right. And his word is health to all my flesh. Right. Like, I like one translation that says, his word is medicine right. to all your flesh. Amen. If you are sick and the doctor told you to take medication, are you going to take that medication? Yes. 
Your dog is sick. You're going to give your dog the medication, yes? yes. Your child is sick. You're going to give your child the medication. Not to emphasize dogs over children, but I'm just saying, when you get medication for something, you're going to take it. Why? Because you don't want to be sick. You don't want to have, you don't want to have that strange sensation. So you're going to take that pill and you're not going to have it. Why? Because the doctor said so. Well, we have the great physician, and he said, take my word, it's medicine to all your flesh. Hallelujah. Well, which word? Well, not just the healing scriptures, all of it. Right. He didn't say, incline your ears to my healing scriptures. He just said, incline your ears to my word, for they are life to all who hear them, and health and medicine to all their flesh. I like living. I like having good life, right? Good life is good life. Yes. It's way better than being sick and infirmed all the time. It's way better than not having enough. I like, I like good stuff. Right. I, like, I like to live the good life. I like to live where I don't feel sick. I started getting some symptoms yesterday. I said, oh no, uh -uh. I know what this is. I'm not having any of you. By the stripes on Jesus' back, I was healed. Amen. I'm not going to get sick. Amen. Why? Because I get his word. We're going to, and this is where we're going to be at now. Romans chapter 12, we're going to start talking about, we've been talking about for, I don't know, a couple of months about words. And while we're still in that kind of same strain, we're going to start talking about the mind. So Romans chapter 12, verse 1, starts and says, I beseech. Do you know what that means to beseech? It means to urge. Paul, by the Holy Spirit, is saying, I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, ac acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may approve what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Did you know that you can know what the good and perfect and acceptable will of God is for your life? Right. Well, if, you, if, you, if we couldn't, he wouldn't have said right here that we can. Right. Come on. God wants us to know his good and perfect and acceptable will for our lives. Listen, okay, so to present, when he says present your bodies... What to present means is to stand by. Literally, it means to stand by. I stand by this decision. Right? I stand by, I stand by my decision. I stand, I, I take a stand alongside of. Uh, to be approved or to approve, to present. I, I, I loved this yesterday, uh, uh, Friday, at, at your dad's memorial service. And they, they, they took the flag and they unfolded it. And then they refolded it. And they very meticulously presented it to Susan on behalf of her father for his service. They presented. See, God wants us to present our bodies to him. Some people just went, uh-oh. <laughs> he wants us to present our bodies to him. It is our reasonable, and I like this, because I went through, and I, I, I don't know how many of you do this, but when I'm, when I'm reading a passage of Scripture sometime, and I'm studying it, I'll open it up in my, my, my study Bible app, which shows me the original Hebrew and Greek, depending on whether you're Old Testament or New Testament. And I'm looking, and reasonable, I, I like this, it says, it is logical to God. I like that. It, our reasonable service... Is it's, it's logical to God. What is logical? It makes sense. It is logical to God that we should do this, that we should act. This is an act of service on our part. It is an act of service on our part to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. It's the same idea of Jesus giving his body for our sins. We can look at that and say, that's not logical. But to God, it was logical to redeem us. Come on, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. God redeemed us. Jesus presented his body 
The, the scripture says he was like a, a, a sheep that went silently before the shearers. He just, he just silently went. Do you know, Jesus could have any time defended himself before Pilate and before, before the high priest. He was, he was clearly in the right. He had done nothing wrong. He, he said, I could, call, I could call on my father and 10,000 angels would come. But he didn't. It was the plan of the father that Jesus the son should die for us so that he could be the firstborn among many brethren. God wasn't looking for one son to be obedient. God's looking for one son to set the pattern and to set the way that we're supposed to walk in. This is the way, walk therefore in it. Walk in the light as he is in the light. You know, being a Christian isn't always going to be about just good stuff happening to you. Jesus said, in this world you're going to have tribulation, but do not fear. I have overcome the world. So when we're going through tribulation, we're going through a hard time, what are we supposed to do? Oh, it's been so hard, Lord. Oh, I just don't know what to do. Oh, this persecution. Oh, come on, you haven't faced persecution. Come on. Jesus faced persecution that caused him to sweat drops of blood. But he just kept doing what was right. That's why he has the name above all names. The name at which every knee is eventually going to bow and every tongue will eventually confess he is Lord, whether it's to their detriment or to their good. Right. It's reasonable to God that if Jesus gave his body, that we should also present our bodies to him for service. In some respect, but not exactly, if I hired one of you to do a job, it is my reasonable service to pay you. I'm not, I'm not saying that salvation is earned by works, but there is a work of salvation. Paul talks about, he says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Salvation is free, absolutely. But we owe our lives to God. Yes. Our lives, our lives are not our own to live. Our lives, we were bought with a price. And you know, we, we, we're studying through the Bible, and, and you know, in one passage, Paul writes about how we're free from this and free from that, and then the next passage talks about how we're bond servants and slaves, and the kids are like, I don't understand. <laughs> Here's the thing. Everything you have, you got freely from God. Yes. Everything you get, you receive freely from God. Yes. The, 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 the thing is, is that there's a requirement that God puts on us. He wants us to do something with the lives that he's given us. The parable of the talents. Okay? I'm just really going to help you guys. Because there are some people who say, well, the, you know, the parable of the talents shows that Jesus, that, that, that God is, is socialist. No, it doesn't. It actually shows you exactly the opposite. Because God gave to three people different, different amounts of talents. You could say, well, I'm not very talented. I'd say, well, it doesn't matter. You can use your talent no matter what. You, you don't have to be Billy Graham to be talented. Right. Come on. Right. You can have one talent and put your one talent to work every Sunday morning, helping set up hospitality and doing other little things like that. That's, that's, your, that's your talent. You're using it. You're not sitting at home not doing something with your talent. You're actually doing something with your talent. Right. Okay? So it is when, when Jesus returns and the first guy has... Has, 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 has doubled his talents, Jesus says, good job, faithful and, and faithful servant, right? right. You, you've, you've taken what I've given you, and you've increased it. Right. See, you can start out with one talent, but you can actually increase your talent, and increase your talent, and increase your talent. Right. There's no limit on how much we can increase what God has given us. Amen. The second guy, he says, he says, I... I I, I, I took what you gave me, and this is what I have to give back to you. I increased it. Praise the Lord. Last guy says, well, I, I knew you were harsh, so I hid it. Mm -hmm. 
Even what he had was taken away from him and given to someone who had done more. It's our reasonable service to serve him. It's our reasonable, it's our logical in the mind of God. It is logical in the mind of God that we do this. And the reason for this, verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. By the renewing of your mind. Conforming, I like this, conforming is just what comes naturally. Right. Right. It, it takes no effort to be conformed. The majority of people, of 8 billion people on the planet, the majority of those 8 billion people are conforming. But you are not. No. You are being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Okay? We're being transformed. We, we, we helped Verna finish this puzzle. I don't know how many pieces it was. I think it was a thousand pieces. And she had like 30 pieces left. And, and Faith and I were over there. And, and, and we're, we're, we're sitting around the table kind of looking at it. And, and, and Verna's watching us. And, and, and we, we took the puzzle, which comes in a box unassembled, like a box of Legos. <laughs> Okay, it doesn't come out. You're like, wow, look at that. The puzzle's done. Wow, look at that. The Legos are done. What happens to it? You have an image that you are looking at, and you are transforming that junk of mess into something purposeful. This is the same thing. Josiah can take a thousand pieces of Legos in tiny separate little bags, pour them all out on the table, and within a couple of hours, he's got something that I just, I, you look at the puzzle pieces, or the, the Lego pieces, you'd be like, I don't see how that's going to happen. I see a couple of wheels over here. I, they, they go on the bottom somewhere. No. Here, here's the thing. There's an image on the box, and the pieces are inside. They just need to be transformed. There's an image on the box, and the pieces are all in here. We just need to get them put together in here. We just need to get them put together so that they become what they're intended to be. The world, see, listen here, the world loves conformity. If you've been around at all for the last couple of years, you can see how they love conformity. You're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do this, you're not going to complain, you're going to wear this, you're going to get that. Yeah. Just conform. Right. Just conform. But God says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. I, how am I not conforming? I'm not buying into the hype. Right. When you buy into the hype, you start, to, you start to get the picture of yourself with this disease. You get an itch on your skin, you're like, ooh, I wonder if that's the monkey pox. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, up here is probably just mosquitoes, so don't get all freaked out. Jesus said in John 15, 15 19, that the world loves itself, but we aren't of the world. Jesus, Jesus himself said it. He said, the world loves itself, but you're not of the world. So we're not to be conformed to the world image. We're supposed to be different. Right. Why, why is it, why is it that, that so many people groups have hated the Jews for thousands of years? Because they're not conformed to the world. They have a God who tells them be different. Well, we have that same God and he tells you be different. Don't be conformed to the world. Don't be conformed to the image that the world has for you. Yes. Taking a morning jog with a mask on. It's 80 degrees outside. By yourself. By yourself. <laughs> you know what that is? That's conforming. Where does that conforming come from? It comes from fear. Yes. Fear of, listen, fear of not fitting in 
has led a lot of people in a lot of directions they didn't want to go. That's right. That's right. That's right. The only place you need to fit in with is heaven. Amen. Come on. The only place you need to fit in with is heaven. Amen. We don't need to fit in with the world. We're actually supposed to be different than yes. the world. Yes. We're not supposed to be conforming to the world. Praise the Lord. If, if we are more like the world, we're being conformed. Right. If my actions and my attitudes and my conversation and, and the way that I live my life on a regular basis is like the world, I can tell you where I'm at. Right. I'm in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, good. that's good. While we're called to be in the world, we're not to, called to be of the world. That's good. So we can be in the world but not of the world. Yes. I don't want to be of the, and I don't want to be in and of the world. I'm here for a purpose. Right. My, listen, my life here, and, I, and I, I start saying this all the time now, it's just what the Lord put in my heart. Um, Moses lived to 120 years, and he did, his eyes weren't dim, and his flesh wasn't weak. I expect the same thing. Amen. Why? Because God did it for Moses, he'll do it for me. That's right. What, is, what does that mean? That means... That means should the Lord tarry, I'm going to live to 120 years old, and my eyes will not grow weak, and my body will not, or my eyes will not grow dim, and my body will not get weak. Right. But you wear readers right now. I just started this journey a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Listen, can I tell you, it's never too late to change what you're doing. Amen. To stop being conformed to the world, to, to start being transformed into the image of God that God has for you in Christ? Yes. It's never too late. No. Never. Never too late. Never. The same spirit, I love this, and I, I love this, the same spirit that wrote the book lives in you. Right. If the same spirit who wrote the book lives in you, can he not help you Put the puzzle together yeah. yes. by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Right. Can he not help you change your words? Can he not help you change your attitudes? Can he not, come on, I want some, yes. we need some yeses yes. here. Yes. Can he help you change your behavior? Yes. 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 How is he going to do it? Well, not by force. No. We have to renew our minds to the word of God. Yes. It's our, it's our choice, absolutely. Yes. We have to renew our minds to what? His way of thinking. His way of speaking. His way of doing. Oh, you know, people get hung up and they say, well, you know, Jesus did those miracles because he was God. No, he didn't. If that was true, where, where was his power and ability when he went to his own hometown and he couldn't heal anybody except a few sick folk with like mild colds or ailments? And he said it was because of their what? Unbelief. Their unbelief. Jesus was a man, just like we are, who was filled with the Holy Spirit, but he had devoted his entire life to renewing his mind in the Word of God, not being conformed to the world. Nine out of nine, nine or ten times out of 19 different healings, every single one of those, and most of the others you could trace back to, it was their faith. Yes. Where Jesus said, your faith has healed you. Yes. Your, your faith has made you well. Yes. Believe only and don't doubt. What is believe only? That means have faith, don't doubt. Yes. Yes. How do we get to that place? By the renewing of our minds. The renewing of the mind makes us able to prove, to test, approve, to be able to distinguish and know what is the good and perfect will, will and well and will pleasing will of the Lord. The good and perfect and well pleasing will of the Lord comes by the renewing of your mind to the Word of God. When we, are, when we are spend more time watching television, more time having conversations, more time doing whatever it is that we, we busy ourselves with doing, 
then we are putting the word of God in us. We're not renewing our minds. It's great to come to church. I believe everybody should be in church. I believe everybody should be in church as much as possible. Yes. But being in church just once a week, and that's all the word you're getting, isn't going to help you renew your mind. Listen, we're coming into some times, and we're already entering into them. I'm, I mean, if, if, you, if you follow even remotely end time prophecy and end time events, we're close. And there's going to be a time, there's a time of transition. There's always a time of transition between one age and the next, an overlapping. The overlapping in, in, the, in the time of Jesus, I mean, Israel was, Israel was occupied by Rome, and at the, end, at the end of that occupation, they burned down the temple. I mean, they were persecuted. The Jews fought again and again and again to get out from underneath Roman rule. You can watch and you can see in the world things are happening. Right. I mean, you, you in, investigate investigate what's going on with the World Economic Forum. Yeah. Yeah. And who? And their, their plans to ultimately rule the world. Yeah. We're close. It's, this is why it's so important that we have our minds renewed to the Word of God. So we know what would God say or do in this situation. Then when you have a witness on the inside of you, a leading on the inside of you, don't go here, go there. Right. Wear this, don't wear that. Right, 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 right. My dad was just reminding us, we were doing our Bible study this week, uh, this pastor Cao from uh, Vietnam, Vietnam, and he said, you know, because church is illegal. It's illegal. It's, it's, it's vastly becoming even more and more illegal in China. And he said, he said we were there. We were the church. And a, and a bunch of military guys came in. And they, they were wandering around, looking everywhere. And eventually they left. Do you know why? They didn't see them. You can be in the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. I would much rather be in the right place at the right time. How's that going to happen? By the renewing of your mind. By, by, by yielding your, your conscience, your mind, because God speaks to us through our conscience. Yeah. He will occasionally speak to you. I, I, I've, I've never had an audible voice, but I've, I've, had him, I've had him speak to me in such a way that I knew that I knew that I knew. This is God. You better start paying attention right now. And then I, most of the time, though, it comes from just an inward just knowing. And how are we going to inwardly know if we're not renewing our minds? We're just going to be conformed to the world. We're going to be like, oh, well, this seems like a good idea. Let's do this. Oh, well, they're doing that. Let's do that. <laughs> Come on. If we can know the good perfect and well-pleasing will of God, then we can know it. Amen. If he said, come on, if he said you can know his good and well-pleasing and perfect will, then we can know it. That's right. It's so important that we begin to yield our minds, our consciences over to God. Amen. We don't want... Listen, I, 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 I see what, what, what is said and what happens in the world, and I don't want to be like them. I don't want to be like the world. Okay. It's getting to the point, I, we, we were talking about this last, last night, right, about Noah and the days of Noah. Um, Jesus said that when talking to his disciples about, about the end times and when would he be returning and when would come the kingdom of God and all these things, he said it will be like it was in the days of Noah. 
Do you know what God said about the days of Noah? He said, the, the, every thought of man is wickedness and evil. I mean, you think about some of the things that they think are okay. Yeah. 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 You don't ever want to side with the world, especially the things, just in the last year and a half, really, some of the things that they, the world is pushing. If your mind isn't renewed, you'll just go along and go, huh, okay. But if your mind is renewed, you'll hear that right away. You go, no, that's not right. That's not right. That's ungodly. God doesn't make mistakes. He, he formed me in the womb. That's right. He doesn't make mistakes. That's right. You're in the body God puts you in for a reason. That's right. I remember when I was a kid, there was a, there was a story about this, this little girl. I think she was born in Sweden. And everybody in her family had blonde hair and blue eyes. And she was born, she had brown hair and brown eyes. All her childhood growing up, she prayed, Lord, why don't I have the same color eyes and hair as the rest of my family? He says, I have a purpose. Do you know where she ended up? As a missionary to the Middle East, ministry. Amen. Where she fit in more. Yes. Did God create her and form her in her mother's womb? Yes. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. You might say, well, you know, Pastor, I, I don't think wicked thoughts. But are you thinking God thoughts? Are we thinking God thoughts? You know, thoughts don't have to be perverse. I mean, where everybody knows something's wrong there in order for it to not be God thoughts. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. We want to renew our minds so that we're thinking God thoughts. Jesus said... I, I, do, I do nothing on my own. I don't say anything that's of my own desire. I don't go anywhere that's my own desire. Well, that was Jesus. Well, he's the prototype. He's the firstborn of many brethren. Listen, we're, we're talking about this is our reasonable, logical to God service is to present our bodies to him. You're, you're not going to send your body somewhere your mind isn't willing to go. Right. Look, if your mind isn't willing to go to Disneyland, your body ain't going. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If, 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 if your mind wants to go somewhere, and in your mind you're thinking about it, contemplating it, planning on it, you're going to take your body there. Right. Aren't you? Because your body never just said, I'm going to get up and go have a piece of cake for breakfast. <laughs> no, you've been dreaming about it. It's been in your thoughts. <laughs> you, have, you have persuaded yourself that cake is a breakfast food because it's got milk and it's got, it's got grain and it's got egg. <laughs> and there's lots of cake in there, so today is a cake day. <laughs> but listen, your body didn't just... Get up and go do something all on its own accord. Yeah. It had your mind leading the way. Yes. Where your mind is, where your heart is, there you will be. There you go. <laughs> you know, it's good to have notes. It's also better to just be led by the Spirit when you're preaching. We, we, we mentioned briefly last week, I, I think, in, in 2 Corinthians 10.5, about casting down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity and obedience to Christ. And we started that with words. That was kind of our, 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 our um, transition from words to mind renewal. Okay? Casting down every thought... And, and every idea that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity and obedience to Christ. Well, pastor, that would, be, that would be all I would be doing all day. 
Well, it might be for a while, then it'll be less and less and less. And you know, some of them thoughts are going to be harder to get rid of than others. Because some of them, we, you know, we, we've had floating around in our heads forever. I'm just this way, it's just the way I am. I'm just this way, it's the way I am. I'm just this way, it's the way I am. I'm just this way. So, no. no. You are not that way, it's just not the way you are. It's the way you have been. It's the way you were. But it's not the way you are if you're not going to let it be. The idea is that we begin replacing worldly ideas or wrong ideas with God ideas. What does God, you have, you, you start to, to feel a little achy in your body. What do you do? Yeah. Rush to the medicine cabinet, take something for it. Ask God, ask God, oh, please don't let it be the monkeypox. <laughs> come on, laugh at the monkeypox. Really, come on. Sometimes the best thing you can do when a wrong thought comes in is you can laugh at it and say, no, that's not the way it is. I know what God said about it. He said this, and this is the way it's going to be. Amen. That's casting down thoughts and imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Yes. When I have thoughts, and I do this on the regular basis, when I have thoughts, I, I say to that thought, I say, no, I won't do that. That doesn't honor God. I'll think on this instead. I'll think, I'll, think on, I'll think on, no, beloved, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health, Amen. even as your soul prospers. Amen. Moses was 120 years old, and his body didn't get weak, neither was his eyesight dim. Awesome. You know, when they, things come along. I went to the gym yesterday. I've started going back to the gym, not just for walking, but to exercise, because, you know, you start to lose weight, and then things, you know, they, they look different. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. So I've been going to the gym, and I was like getting these aches, and I'm like, all across here, I'm like, oh. Wait a minute, I went to the gym. No, it's not sickness. It's sore muscles. I worked them. Come on, listen. The devil will have you. You get a spot on your arm, you're like, oh, I hope it's not melanoma. And you watch that thing for the next eight months. And you keep picking at it, trying to figure out. It was just an ingrown hair all the time. And you just kept picking at that thing and popping that thing back open. Leave it alone! Come on, everything is not sickness and disease. The devil wants you to believe that. Do you know why? Because the devil can't make you do something. He can only give you thoughts that will lead you down the path that are gonna, is going to lead you to where sickness and disease are, and you will have talked yourself into it. Right. You can talk yourself into poverty. I know people that have absolutely believed that there are some people that are just destined to be poor. Well, how does that scriptural? How we transform is we started out the worm that never dies. We built a cocoon with the word of God, and we come out a butterfly. The word transform there is actually the Greek word for metamorphosis, right? It is the Greek word that we, we, we call metamorphosis. It's like the transformers, more than meets the eye. One moment they're a car, the next minute they're a giant robot 100 feet tall, right? Didn't see that one coming when the Camaro was driving down the road. All of a sudden, it stops and stands up, and it's a giant robot standing in your face. Come on. You are, you are more than meets the eye. Amen. Right. Amen. If we would look at ourselves the way that God looks at us, instead of the way we see ourselves in the mirror, right. the, way, the, way, the way that we've painted for ourselves to, to be seen by ourselves. I love what Kathy does. She, she puts her makeup on and does her hair, and she might not be satisfied with this or that. She says, you're beautiful. And she's, then she's, she's done. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. You, you, you speak what you see in your heart from the word of God for yourself. Right, 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 right. So this is, why, this is why that book, Change Your Words, Change Your Life, is so, is so 
powerful and so impactful because when we change our words, the purpose of changing our words is to renew our minds. Yes. When we renew our minds, we become something better. Yes. We become something greater. We become more of what God has called us to be. Yes. We ought to be able to think, we ought to be able to think and comprehend things tomorrow that we didn't understand a year ago. Yes. I'm gonna say that again. A year from today, you should be able to think and comprehend things along the nature of God that you didn't today. Yes. Amen. Why? Because we're putting the word of God in us. Yes. Wisdom, wisdom comes from God. Yes. Who's the all wise one? Who laughs, at, who laughs at leaders of nations God. because they think they're wise? God. God. Because all wisdom comes from God. God. If we can get his word in our minds and start thinking, listen, I, I, I'm not telling you that change, change your words and your thoughts today and you'll be 100% better tomorrow. No, I'm telling you, you do it today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and you keep on doing it. And sometimes you're going to keep on doing it in spite of the fact that you don't feel it that you haven't done it, that you're not actually, you're not actually doing what you're, you say you're doing, but I will tell you, the more that you will say and get the word of God in your mind, transforming your mind is powerful and it will transform your life, it will transform your body, it will transform everything about you. Yes, yes. Listen, you, I started out one way, okay. I'm this way now, yes. but I'm he still headed this way. Yes. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not one to judge a person based on where they're at with the Lord right now. I don't judge anybody based on where they're at with the Lord right now. Right. Do you know who I judge? I judge myself. I judge myself. I, I, only, only I... No I. Right, right, right. right? I don't know you. I don't live with you. I live with them. <laughs> but I'm not even qualified to judge them, even though I live with them. Why? Because I don't know what's going on in their heart. Right. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what they're really struggling with right. in their minds. Right. I'm qualified to judge me. And I do that, and I say, Lord, help me in this area. And then I, I put some word in me concerning that area. When we talk about transforming us by renewing of their minds, what happens in our minds? What are thoughts? What are thoughts, ideas? Thoughts and ideas convey an image. Okay, we could we could look over back at the beginning at the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis, when God said, "Let there let there be creeping animals that creep on the you know cattle and all these other things." Did He have just a generic, like creeping kind of little animal thing, or did He have a very specific? When He created birds of the air, I mean, you look. I, there, we've we've had some woodpeckers around our house recently. And they don't look at all like Woody. Woody Woodpecker, they don't look at all like Woody Woodpecker. They're absolutely beautiful. I love watching them. But can you imagine having that image of the woodpecker in your mind and the, and the um, uh, flamingo and um, hummingbird, just different kinds of animals, all in your mind, and these are the thoughts that you're thinking. So what is God thinking? God is always thinking beauty. He's always thinking creative, creatively, right? God is a is creator. When he took the dirt of the ground and formed man, he didn't just, man didn't look like a stick figure. No. <laughs> formed in the dirt. Man looked like man formed out of the dirt. Did God just, did he just like go, ooh, let's put some arms. They should be on the sides, not the front and back. 
No, he had a well-planned out thing, didn't he? When he forms, he knows because he has the thought. The thought that's in his mind when he thinks. Like, I love Zephaniah 3.17. He, when he thinks about us, he spins around wildly in anticipation of us. So one of God's thoughts is he gets excited just thinking about you. Come on, that's so good. Zephaniah 3.17. God had a mental image, a purpose, a design. Remember, we, we, we we're talking about thoughts, right? Thoughts, thinking God's thoughts. Thoughts are a purpose thing. They're a design. When, when, when we added the room, my, my dad's room onto the house, we didn't, just, we didn't just order a bunch of bags of concrete and a bunch of wood and some electrical stuff and put it out in the backyard and then try to find people to put stuff together. What a mess that would be. It would still be all sitting there. I'm like, I don't know what to do. But God has given us his instruction book. He, he, he gives you the image that he has of you. His image of you is that you're glorious, that you're wonderful, that you're loved that you're perfect, that you're special, that you're beautiful, that you're healed, that you're, you're prosperous, you're succeeding in life. That's God's image of you. Yes. <clears throat> ah, look at the time. The, the Word of God says, when He thinks about us, His thoughts... His ideas, think about Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, right? right. They're good plans yes. to prosper you, yes. right? Yes. We need to get God's thoughts and his plans for us in our minds. Yes. Because if we don't do that, then we're just going to be conformed to the earth world instead of transformed into his image. I love being transformed into his image. Yes. Sometimes I think the process takes a little longer than I would like. But then ultimately, who's responsible for my process time? Yeah. Right? Who's responsible for your process time? Yeah. Right, not me. Not God. We're responsible for our process time. Come on. Sometimes we're going through, we're going through winter, and everything just freezes up. We're just like, <laughs> no one is going anywhere. <laughs> then we're in the spring. We're like, wow, look, everything's getting better. And then we're in the summer, and it's getting hot. And we're like, <sighs> big slowdown time. Fall, I think I'll take a nap. Right? Right? I, wherever you're at in that season of transforming your mind, that is not your destination. That's just where you're at on the way to who God called you to be. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for your word. I thank you, Father, that our minds are being transformed into the image of God through Christ Jesus. We're being transformed into the, into the people that you've called us to be, to do the things that you've called us to do. We're submitting ourselves to you, submitting our lives to you. We're presenting our bodies to you, a, 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 a sacrifice, so that we can become who you've called us to be. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.